what's up everybody my name is booper duper wait yeehaw unity community my name is boopy and my name is little ajt ajt aj3 all right so today we are going to be doing three of my scary reddit horror stories and those are going to be my red-faced man my uh my grandmother lives under my house and my my grandfather was a world war ii horror vet veteran all right so first up we are starting with my grandmother lives under my house when i was a little girl I would go and visit and stay at my grandmother's house every Friday. We would play with dolls, go to McDonald's, watch scary movies. It was fun. My grandmother became very sick when I got older and eventually had to be brought to a home to be taken care of. So this for me and my young self ultimately meant that I could not longer stay at my grandmother's every Friday like before. Everything was normal until my mom and dad had stopped talk taking me to go see her. I don't know what happened. I would ask if we could go see grandma and they would either make an excuse or not, or say not today. It was like out of nowhere, but my little kid brain couldn't comprehend all that was going on. So I just went with it. One day I saw my mom and dad outside one morning when I woke up. I watched them from the window. They had a big black bag that looked very heavy. They were in the garden that is underneath the house. We have a garden underneath our house because my grandma made that back when she was my age. She owned this house before us. They were digging. They put the bag in a hole and covered it up with dirt and then put it in the house flat back down. Then fast they walked inside. That's when the suspicious behavior started. They would make excuses not to go see grandma they would pretend like the car is out of gas or they would say they don't feel well. I love my grandma and I wanted to go see her. And I guess three days ago, I did. I'm 18 now, about to move out in two months. And three days ago, I witnessed something that has made my travel plans sooner. I was in my room playing Fallout 4 on my PS4 when I heard whistling. It was a very familiar, but I couldn't figure out where I knew it from. It continued on for a few moments till I paused my game and it stopped. I was confused, but it didn't concern me. I figured it was just my mom doing laundry downstairs and singing. She does that a lot. So I put my headphones on and continued my game. About three minutes later, I heard whistling again. I was really confused now. So I just cracked open my door and yelled down to my mom to see if it was her. Mom? No response. I said it again. Mom? And then it started again. But it was closer now. But it wasn't close as right next to or beside me. No. This was coming from somewhere I couldn't figure out. I listened around. I put my ear on the door and walked down the hall. I put my ear on the wall, then I went back to my room. I was getting a little freaked out, so I would get my game back up and would calm me down. I played about another 10 minutes before hearing the whistling again. Louder. It sounded close, but there was no one around me. I texted my brother to see if he was home. He said nah and that he was with his friend about 15 minutes away. How far away he is is very important to the story. I told him I kept hearing a whistling somewhere and told him that I called out to mom to see if it was her, but she never replied. He went silent. Well, of course it couldn't have been mom. I'm confused. Why not? I asked confusedly. Because mom just pulled out of the driveway from here. She just dropped me off. My heart froze as I heard the whistling again. It was coming from downstairs. 
I got down on my hands and knees and put my ear to the floor. It got louder and louder and louder until it just stopped. I remembered where I was waiting when I finally realized that the whistling reminded me. It's the tune that my grandmother would always whistle when she was big for us. Before I could do anything, I heard, Allison. Then a loud thud from underneath me. I shot up and I ran out of my room. I went up to the attic, so I was far away from the bottom of the house as I could be. I called my brother and told him that he, he said he would be right there. His friend gave him a ride. They were there in six minutes, traveling a 15 minute route. They both rushed up to me. But the scariest part of the story is when my brother and his friend pulled up. Right underneath my bedroom window, there was a hole. It looked like it was dug from inside out. Meaning it looked like someone had dug themselves out from underneath the house. I was too scared to move after that. Then I remind my brother about the day I saw the parents underneath the house garden. In the bag I saw. My brother's friend told my brother to stay with me and he went to check it out. He came back. His words were, There was a bag under there, but it looked like it had been ripped to shreds. Also, every single zip or tooth is broken. Whatever was in that bag, it was either really valuable and someone was determined to get in it, or someone or something was eager to get out of it. Story two. The red-faced man. This is a fictional psychotic horror story. He comes to visit me every night. He comes to check on me before bed. Sometimes he'll sing me a lullaby or read me a bedtime story if I was still crying when he gets there. He comes when mommy and daddy finally stop arguing and go to bed. Sometimes when daddy really makes me sad, the man will bring me presents. Like last week after my hand got cut on a piece of glass from a bottle that he threw at me. The man brought me a box of band-aids. Then just last night, he colored with me. Yesterday I told him I wished that mommy and daddy wouldn't argue so much. He put his finger on my cheek and said, I will take care of you. The next morning mommy and daddy were not home when I woke up. They didn't come home all day. I'm tired, so I go to my room, and the man comes again. I tell him that I miss my mommy and daddy, and I wanted to know where they were, and I hope they came home soon. He put his finger on my cheek and said, I will take care of you. The next morning, I woke up and heard people outside my house. There was a crowd of people hovering around something in my backyard. There were two bodies in the garden that the neighbor's dog dug up. It was my parents. The night I went to stay with my grandma. And when I went to bed, the man was already in my room. I sat by him and we talked. I asked him, why is your face red? He looked at me, put his hand on my shoulder, and told me a story. His name is Mark Graham. He is 33 and works in an employment office. One day, a woman came in to apply and ended up going home with him that night. Her name was Cindy Harris, and after two years became his wife. They had a baby boy, but he died at three months due to the mother drowning the kid in a kitchen sink filled with scalding hot water. Mark got mad, and him and his wife would fight and argue every night until it got really bad. He got really mad at her one night after coming home early from work and finding Cindy and Mark's best friend in bed together. He tried to go after them, but the guy was faster. He grabbed a beer bottle and broke it and shoved it into Mark's face. He grabbed the gun out of the closet and shot both of them, each twice, one in the head and one in the chest. Then he went to his son's old room, took a picture of him, grabbed a knife, and cut off the skin that was hanging from his face. Then he shot himself in the head with the last bullet in the chamber. 
He kissed me on the forehead and sang a short lullaby. Then once again left. I've never seen the man with the red face again after that. But still, every night before I go to sleep, all I can hear is the last lullaby Mark ever sang to me. Fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, click, click, boom. And if you are to die tonight, remember to never go down without a fight. Story three. All right. My grandfather was a World War II veteran. Hello, my name's Alan. And I have a story for you guys, but it's kind of weird. My grandfather was a World War II veteran, and our whole family loved him. He lost his legs, but that never slowed him down. I was seven when he ended up dying in battle, but before he did, he would always came up and visit with us and told us stories. But one day something weird happened. He showed up at my house at three o'clock in the morning. His eyes were beet red. His nose was running badly. He was coughing, panted and gasped for air a lot, and he was holding his gut in pain. He was also very paranoid. It was very scary. But my mom and dad told us to go back to bed while they stayed up, tried to figure out what was wrong. But while my siblings went back to bed, I snuck out and listened to the conversation from the top of the stairs. He said that him and some of his military friends were at the beach celebrating one of their buddies' birthdays. When this kind of gas-like thing filled around, people in gear were spraying them with kind of gas. I'm now 17, and my grandfather died about two weeks after that event. And I recently remembered about it, and asked my parents what Grandpa was talking about that night. I researched prev- previous about the gases in World War II, but it said no gas were actually used in World War II. My parents sat down and explained to me about how no gases were used in World War II, but apparently the British Army had planted and raid beaches and villages in Germany. But it was only a pre-attack, so it was rejected in actual war. I think that the British Army still snuck up poison gas into the war, but his body was never recovered. But the reason I'm posting this is that the other night I was sleeping, and at 3 o'clock in the morning I heard a knock at my door. No one else was home. So I went downstairs and turned on the outside light on. I put my hand on the lock and asked, who is it? I got no response. After a few seconds, I asked again. Still no response. So I looked out the peephole and saw an old man on my porch pacing back and forth, clawing at his eyes and squeezing his stomach. Then I realized it was my grandfather. Just as I went to unlock the door, another knock hit my door. I jumped back and heard a slight mumble from outside the door saying, Submarine. Then I woke up. The next day on the news, they talked about how some missing World War II veterans were found in submarines at the bottom of the beach. Said the bodies seemed to be dead for at least 10 years. My jaw dropped when I heard this, but I haven't told anyone about it. Am I crazy? Was this legit sign for my grandfather? Thank you guys so much for watching. Hit the like and want to subscribe. Now I gotta go over to Lily's house. See you guys next video. Bye bye.